So I thought clicker sets were, were interesting, which is why I, I basically offered it up for publication at one point uh, as a, a powerful learning tool. <clears throat> so if we move on to the next slide, I'm going to change gears a little bit. So I'm telling you about two things. I'm telling you what I've, what I've just told you is that I post my PowerPoint. I ran into a problem when I started using clickers. Um, and I not only resolved my problem by modifying my clicker presentation to backtrack them to usable, uh, postable PowerPoint, right? Uh, I also discovered that there's an interesting and what I think is a fairly powerful teaching tool in the form of a clicker set like this. And I have um, a number of them now that I've that I modified to actually look like the one I showed you. So now I want to talk about podcasts. The first thing that happened is I had an accident in class. Uh, I don't know if you're still looking at me or looking at something else, but if you're looking at me, I'm pacing back and forth within the confines of wherever the camera is supposed to be. I don't know which camera is supposed to be this one. I keep looking the other way. And <laughs> I should be looking there. The other day when we were first, I was looking there. Yeah. Look there. Okay, so I am looking. But you can probably see that I'm pacing around. Um, and I, I swiped my hand on the instructor's bench where there were about half a dozen either tape recorders or voice recorders or MP3 players that could record voice from students owned by students who wanted to take my lectures. Students always ask, can they tape a lecture? And I would say yes. And that's so that I invite them to bring their thing up here. And I knocked one on the floor. Fortunately, it didn't break. But I decided that I would do recording, which would prevent that from happening, and give everyone an opportunity, if they really wanted to, to listen to these things again. So I initially intended to do voiceover recordings of my turning point presentation, uh, basically just an audio. But as you'll see, it ended up being uh, a video. So I have a, a question if you click one more time. <clears throat> and this is a, a turning point question. I want to get an idea of uh, what, whether you are familiar with podcasting. Um, so you have to answer, I am familiar with podcasting. Not at all. I think so. Take the Fifth Amendment. Yes. Yes, really. So pick the answer that's, that's closest to your understanding of podcasting. If I had to answer this question the day I decided I would actually try to do this, I would have answered the one. <laughs> Not at all. But I've looked like a fair number of you, 38% of the six people who are there, seven. <laughs> I don't know how many. Uh, and don't tell me. But uh, most of you seem to really know what it is. Well, you're better off than, than I was. Next, please. Um, I decided I would record my lecture live, and here are my choices. I could have done audio only, as it says. And that's really very easy for anyone who's who, who clicked anything other than the, than the last choice. It's really very easy. I have an MP3 player that has a voice recording capability, and I could stick it in my shirt pocket after I turned it on, or I could wrap, stick it on a lanyard around my neck and start my lecture. And uh, at the end, when I was finished, I would stop it, and it creates WAV file, WAV file, which uh, some other good producer could convert to an iPod file format that could be put onto people's audio iPods. But I chose to do video. Uh, I wanted students to be able to see what I was saying in class connected to the slides and the components of the animation that I was actually doing. So I do this. I open Turning Point, in my case. Uh, I have to open the recording software. Uh, I'll say more about that in a minute. And I do my recording. I record a voiceover Turning Point presentation. And when it's done, I have to convert that recording to an iPod file format uh, for students to view on their iPods. So that's, a, in a nutshell, what I do. If you'll click one more time, uh, we're on a slide that says producing the video. And uh, these are some details, so if it's a little technical, don't sweat it. You can ask me questions about it later. Uh, I, turning, what I really do is I open Turning Point and this uh, software called Camtasia. It's interesting, Camtasia is a lot like Turning Point in that it is a plug-in to PowerPoint. 
So when you actually have this loaded on your computer, when you open up PowerPoint, you'll see not only the Turning Point toolbar, but you'll see a Camtasia toolbar as well. So what do I have to do when I, and I you imagine me walking into a classroom up to a podium computer that I turn on, and I open up Turning Point, and the next thing I have to do is click on the Camtasia button and set the recording level, right? That's what you have to do if you're going to record. I'm already wearing a microphone. In my case, it would be a wireless microphone because I had to pace around so much I can't just stand next to a, next to a microphone mounted on a podium. And then I begin recording, and when it's over, when my session is over, I save the recording, and then I have to produce this as a suitable file type. I chose at first to produce a WMV file. That's, that's something recommended by any number of media players. It, it stands for Windows, Windows Media Video, I guess. Uh, most people who buy a PC these days will have Windows Media Player on there because it's from Microsoft. So I chose to do that partly for that reason and partly because these WMV files are very, very compressed. They're very short. They don't take up a lot of memory compared to any other file format that you could use. So I did that. And if we click one more time, uh, we can now go to a, a, a sample video clip if you like. Uh, basically, I would get out of the uh, of, um, turning point, get the, just minimize it, so don't, don't close it, minimize it. Hopefully, you put the monomers, polymers, WMV file on the desktop, and if you click on it, I think you'll hear my voice 10 talking the same lecture, actually. Uh, and I'm hoping that you can use the progress bar to move, move around the page. Uh, rather than listen. Well, I won't, let, won't make it. Let's see what happens. Um, I need to see, is it working? Joe, I have it on my iPod. Well, you, you, yeah, but I wanted to actually, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we look at it as an iPod uh, later? Look at it on okay. the iPod later, or you can pass it around if you like now. I had intended to show it to you on the full screen because my first, uh, the inclination was that, you know, not everybody has a $250 iPod, video iPod. So I'm going to have to make my presentations, my recordings available uh, to everyone in the class. And to do that, I did these WMD files and I put them on D2L, which is our course management system. Mm -hmm. This is what it on Blackboard or WebPC as a WMD file. And that, that's uh, one reason I chose to use a highly compressed format is because it wouldn't take up a lot of server space doing that. That's what I wanted to show you, because students can see the presentation pretty much full screen. But you, you kind of saw me do it, so take my word for it, you can do that. Um, you can either pass the iPod around and let people look at it now, or you can do it when I finish. Either way, it's okay. So we'll just click, instead of getting out of the program, just click to the next slide. And uh, you should see a slide that says, producing the podcast, producing the podcast. Well, there are a number of steps to producing an actual podcast. So far, all I did was make a WMV file and put it up on our D2L site, so my, on my course site for students to see. You have to produce an iPod file from the original recording that Camtasia makes. You have to post it to an appropriate server here at UWM. We're using iTunes U, which is a, an Apple, I guess, uh, uh, freebie. Apple provides, you know, what iTunes is, of course, is where it's used. The kids can load, download, or anybody can download music to their iPod. Well, iTunes U was set up as a service, I guess, by Apple to serve the educational community. And students subscribe to iTunes U, and anyone who is enrolled in one of your classes that uses iTunes U, if they subscribe, if they become a subscriber, uh, the iPod files that I post are automatically downloaded to their PC or their Mac. Furthermore, if they plug in their iPod, uh, they can then download those you know, same files to their iPod. This is now a video iPod. As far as I know, the audio iPod won't take the audio component. You have to actually have a video iPod. So those students can see, if any, anybody subscribes, can see the file on their PC. They can see them on the Mac. Plus, meaning it's portable. By making a podcast, you've made your educational material portable. Uh, anybody who, who commutes actually uses these things, and I 
uh, have asked my students, and that's what they do.